Good day, everyone. Welcome to our 10th webinar for the Introduction to E-Commerce course by the Faculty of Management and Development Studies, University of the Philippines, Open University. So uh, this webinar is about digital marketing, and we will try to integrate everything in this uh, one-hour discussion. Our topics for this video is about branding, how it can help your business models, and how can you create a lasting impression that can create lasting relationships towards your customers. And then we'll integrate everything in a marketing board that you can use to create your marketing plan. And that is uh, integrating the three S in the marketing strategy. All right. So before we start, uh, I'd just like to uh, make comments on uh, the evaluations I made on the business models that I read from the submissions. Uh, that's assignment number three. Now, um, I saw there that most of the submissions, uh, I, I saw lacking uh, statements in the value proposition. The value proposition should be based on your market research, based from your benefits of your product or service, as well as the unique selling proposition of uh, your product and services. That would make your value proposition stick. And that is the starting point of any uh, business branding. So. This, uh, our first topic, uh, a, a quick one, would be branding. So what is a brand? When we talk about brand, uh, we often get com confused. Uh, when we talk about brand, people say it's uh, the logo, it's the colors, it's uh, the messages. But uh, those are just part of it. Uh, Yes, it's part of the branding, but uh, that is not the whole story of uh, a brand, of a, a business. Branding is about creating a perception. Creating a perception brought by customer experiences from your business marketing mix. So what are marketing mix? These are the place where we would distribute your products or services, prices, uh, promotions, and then your products. That's for the, the typical business selling physical products. For services, uh, we have uh, added factors such as um, people, processes, and even uh, um, packaging. Yeah. So basically, any experience that your your customers had in your marketing mix uh, adds up to their uh, perception if your, your your business is good for them or bad that perception aids them in their decision making whether to buy from you or not now um, not necessarily they would come across every marketing mix uh, every marketing four piece let's say they just saw you in an ad that's one touch point that creates a perception. Is this a good business? Is this a good product to buy? So that creates a perception and it's an accumulation of that experiences that creates sort of uh, memories, uh, relationships, uh, even emotions. Uh, some say brand is a gut feel whether to buy from you or not. So, but basically, Brand is a perception, perception that is based from their experiences from your brand. So it's crucial that you create good customer experiences so that when they, uh, when they have that need or that problem, and then your, 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 cost, your, your product or service address that problem or address that need, they would think of you, think of your business as the first option. It's like being the top of mind uh, word in their in their mind so that when they have that need, they would think of your business. So that's brand or branding. Now, 
this is at the 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 three S marketing board that will be discussing uh, for the rest of the 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 webinar. So, what are the three S's? So we have the story, symbols, and the system. System strategy it's interchangeable, but basically, uh, it's the story. It's the message that your business conveys. What are the symbols to recall that message? And what are the system based on the customer journey that you want to provide? They want you to develop tactics so that you can reach out to your customers and be able to sell uh, whatever you're, you're, you're selling. It could be a product or a service. And uh, that... Uh, system it's also a strategy wherein you can create uh, continuous development continuous improvement based on what you're building on the system so we'll discuss that uh, as the, the the discussion progress so these uh, elements uh, are the ingredients of a good a good brand so when we talk about symbols some people talk about brand as symbols so it's just one element when we talk about stories the messaging it's part of the brand but it's just one element brand is the interaction uh, of your customers with these uh, uh, story symbols and your system as a strategy so when the, the starting point of uh, this marketing board is with your target market. The assumption here is that you know who your target market are, as well as you know their needs, their wants, their preferences, their problems, so that you can create good story symbols that can connect so that you can uh, create relationships for your uh, business for your marketing and the end point is business objectives now this marketing board just uh, addresses uh, what you need to do in terms of your marketing objectives marketing objectives is different for from your business objective marketing is about uh, getting customers getting repeat sales and building that relationship business objective can be different uh, this could be based on profit, based on operational excellence, whatever. Business objective is different. So that's the end point of this marketing board. Your marketing plan that should create a brand that would help you address or, or achieve your business objectives. Some, some people uh, uh, use strategic objectives as part of the strategy but but for our uh, discussion marketing objective and business objective business objective is for the whole business now that involves other factors of uh, or other functions of a business operations organization management and finance for this one it's just for your marketing management that is uh uh for your marketing objectives only all right so let's talk about the three s's on this marketing board that you can use you can use this uh to build your marketing plans uh, the good thing in this uh format in a one pager format for for the marketing board or marketing planning using this one pager format you can easily print this one out and then just scribble and then brainstorm or you can you can uh, use uh, an electronic format in PowerPoint scribble down type in uh, whatever you want to to start with and then iterate continuously improve as you implement your marketing plan um, so let's uh, discuss uh, in detail the story elements. So we have four uh, positioning, 
Ano, positioning, promise, personality, and your storyboard. So that's the heart of uh, the, the story uh, of the 3S uh, framework. So let's first talk about positioning. What is positioning? Basically, positioning is how you want people to perceive your brand. So this is the objective of your uh, marketing for you to create that perception. So this is a sort of an objective just for your use. And this would be the basis of all your marketing campaigns. Now, most of the time, people don't publish this positioning because you don't want your competitors to see your uh, positioning goals. You want, uh, you want this to be seen on your actions rather than what uh, you want in terms of uh, your, your, your business description and all. So this is just for you as uh, the entrepreneur. You, you want to position your business uh, in the minds of your, your consumers, your customers in relation to your competitors. So it seems it seems complicated, but we can just use simple templates that you can use in your value proposition as well in your business models. So the first template that you can use, simply your business helps this customer who want to, so this is the jobs to be done in your value proposition uh, canvas, or this can be problems and then uh, follow it up with by reducing or avoiding a pain point and increasing or enabling gains so pains are needs so these are the immediate uh, immediate problems that they want to be solved and then gains are like wants so luxuries that uh, can be an added bonus for your customers if you can offer that. And then close it out, buy, and then state your product plus the key benefits and unique selling proposition of your of the product or service you're selling. So you just fill this one out and you have a positioning statement. So this is the first template that you can use. Second one. Second one, this is more confrontational in nature uh, because uh, it, it involves naming current alternatives. But you can be general in this, in, in this uh, current alternative. So it starts with for your target customers. So just put in your target customers who are dissatisfied with their current alternatives. So what are the current alternatives in the market and what are their problems typically so that's that statement then follow it up with our product or service uh, is a a new product category or a new offering or something that is unique to you that provides uh, the key problem you're solving and then finish it up with unlike blank which is the current alternative we have assembled this uh, unique selling proposition. So that's another template that you can use. We'll just fill this one out. It, this is an easy exercise if you have a good market research because you know who your target market are, who your customers are, you know their needs, their wants, and as well as the, the key feature or the key benefit or unique selling proposition that you want to pursue in your product. The last one is an easy positioning statement. So it's just end result that your customers want plus specific, specific period of time plus address the objections. So the perfect example of this uh, template is the Pizza Hut example. So this is a common example of this. Uh, positioning template. So Pizza Hut, uh, their positioning statement that also act as their 
sort of a slogan, a brand promise, is that hot, fresh pizza in 30 minutes or else it's free. Simple as that. That's their positioning statement. They want to provide hot, fresh pizza and a specific period of time in 30 minutes. Plus, they want to address objections because people will be naturally skeptical with a 30-minute delivery, no questions asked. So they address the immediate objection. When uh, the delivery surpasses the 30-minute mark, it's free. So hot, fresh pizza, or else it's free. Simple as that. So that's three ways you can create your positioning statement. This can be used as your value proposition in your business models, as well as you can create a version, a small version, or a shortened version of that positioning statement that you can use for uh, brand branding of for message for uh, the your the branding message, yeah. branding message for your for your business. All right, so that's a starting point. Positioning is like your objective. Objective on what perception you want to achieve in the minds of your customers. So this is uh, the initial step in building a good brand. So positioning. Next element in the story uh, of the 3S framework is promise. Promise is a three to five word version of your positioning statement. Promise is the one communicated to your customers. Often, promises uh, created by brands are vague because it, it, it covers everything. Plus, uh, uh, it, it connotes mystery and unique capture of, of that three to five words. Why, why three to five words? Because uh, there's a study that when you use three to five words as your brand promise, it sticks to the mind of your, in the mind of your customers better as compared to a lengthy one. So if you compare the positioning statements that we had uh, previously, the templates, it's lengthy. Um, except for, for the, the third one. But in brand promise, a three to five word can be a catchy, it can, it can, it can double as a catchy tagline, catchy slogan, or any, any brand marketing campaign message. Uh, so it's designed as a vague statement because your action would explain why you are communicating that brand promise. So if you can notice in today's uh, uh, Philippine setting, big companies use this a lot, like Jollibee, Bida Ang Saya, the We Find Ways, BDO, and the others. So uh, it can be a good starting point. Your promise can be catchy and your actions your experiences that you bring to your customers can can uh, uh, reinforce that brand promise. So there's really no rule in the brand promise. You can create any iterations, even uh, even with grammatical errors. It doesn't matter. Um, what matters is uh, the the brand promise is catchy, and it 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 explains your your positioning statement. Now, a good way to create a brand promise is through picking words directly from your customers. So again, this is based from your market research. Uh, you're wondering why we had this activity wherein you would talk to at least three people. So that way you can experience talking to your customers in your target market and seeing or hearing exact words that they're saying to you. And uh, those words can be a source of statements, words that you can uh, interchange to create a brand promise. 
So most of the time, people would create this marketing study, market research study, wherein they would talk to people, mirror people, and then shadow people, and then uh, find catchy words or commonly used words so that when they create that brand promise, it immediately resonates to those, to those target market. Right. So positioning statement is not really... Uh, communicated uh, however brand promise is the one used in marketing materials marketing campaigns and your uh, the the patchy statement below your logo so usually that's the one here we have uh, the brand story so this is the heart of the story element this is a summary of uh, the compelling story of your brand. Uh, the brand should tell its target customers. Basically, what's the story of your business? How it was created, why it was created, and uh, why it matters to your customers to, 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 uh, to buy from you. So stories are the, the, the one that creates culture. So uh, when we define culture, these are shared stories, shared meaning through time. So when we create story, it humanizes our business. It creates a simple beginning that can uh, connotes that we are connecting in a uh, more emotional level towards our customers. So there's, there's, you, you can uh, think of any story. Uh, the best ones are are based on experience, based on your experience or your customer's experience. However, we, we, we can if you're uh, find it if you find it challenging to create a story, you also have a template here that you can you can follow. So uh, before we proceed, customer persona is a one is a fictional character that's, that simplifies your target market. So you just name, you just uh, pick a fictional name and then create a description, their demographic, psychographics, behavioral, and technographics. That would be your customer persona as well as their habits, their uh, a day in the life, uh, what's their um, typical day, uh, what activities do they do? So, so that's a customer persona. Right? It's like a fictional character with an actual description. So that's a customer persona. So you start creating stories by using this template. So once upon a time, blank, see customer, and then the story. And then what's, uh, uh, once upon a time, this customer always do this, something like that. So it's like an introductory part of your story. And then you follow it up with, but this customer always had a problem. So you state here, what are the problems of your customers? Or it, it can always be your the problems that you experience while you created the business. You can, you, can, you can put that up. So this customer... Try to solve it by uh, tell the, the, the typical or the current alternatives they're using. And then your customer wished that, so this is the, the, the objective or the, the pains and gains or the goals of your customers, state that. And then until, until one day, the customer find, found your business. So... Just tell stories about your business, why it was created, and how it relates to the customer. Unlike the current solution, so the, the product and service you're selling or your business, state the description. And then the last part, um, this customer wish came true to blank, which is their objective, their goals in life. So this is uh, from taken from a simple template taken from the simple customer journey, hero's journey that we talked about, uh, I think a week ago. So 
it's easy to start with this template because you can always improve on it as you talk to many customers or as you meet uh, people that can uh, build better stories. Now, I'd like to show you an example. An example. Uh, let me just share another screen. So I had this uh, student, I think, three years, four years ago. Yeah. So she opened a business uh, this pandemic. Um, let me just open that. Okay, can you see the video, everyone? Yeah. Yes, Paul. Okay. Let's Fair let's enough. play. mag-asawa kasi very busy kami with work. Alam mo yun, wala na kaming time magluto sa bahay. Tapos isang gabi, pa-uwi kami, gusto namin ng masarap na pagkain. Tapos, puro na lang fast food, lahat ng madadaanan namin na drive through Eh, tamad na kami bumaba. Wala pang pandemic during that time. Out of the blue lang, naisip namin na, ano kaya no, merong drive through ng mga lutong ulam, like mga karinderiya type talaga, ng mga paborito namin Filipino dish. Masarap lang sa pag-usapan, pero hindi namin naisip na magkakatotoo. Tapos nangyari yung pandemic. Tapos ganun na naman, hindi ka makakain sa labas. Tapos kailangan mo na naman mag-drive through parati. Lahat take out. Ito pala yung perfect time talaga na pwede natin gawin tong drive through Kasi lahat ng tao ay nagdi-drive through ngayon dahil takot sila lahat sa labas. Pag nadadaanan ng tao yung jacks, akala nila trailer truck siya. Yung container van. Pero yung totoo, hindi siya container van. Kasi mahal yun eh. So, ang ginawa lang namin, gumawa lang kami ng makeshift na magbumukhang container van. So, gawa lang siya sa yero para mas maliit yung capital namin. Tapos, plywood, yung loob. Tapos, naglagay kami ng mga windows, like window 1, window 2, window 3. So, gusto talaga namin ma-feel ng customers na nag-drive through talaga sila. Tapos, ang naging gastos lang talaga namin, kung saan kami talaga nag-invest. Kasi para magmukha talaga siyang drive through dun sa mga sizes, like yung mga... Ulam drive through mga this way, yung mga gano'n, parang mukha siya, legit. Okay, so, that's an example. That's an example of, uh, of uh, using that template, if you would notice. So, uh, Rika used uh, the problem, the introductory statement, problem statement, and then, and then, uh, oh, the problem, and then their 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 unique idea, and then how it addressed the problem, and then uh, the wish came true. So uh, to have this the Ulam drive through, which is uh, a new innovative thing so that story can create a perception a positive perception that relates to a human being on a personal level on an emotional level so you can start creating stories using that simple template and then uh, improve just improve it as you uh, execute your uh, business your business plan okay let me just open this, this the slides any question uh, before we continue do we have questions okay so let's just wait for the the screen so so we talk about positioning, brand promise, and then um, story. So this template, this simple template can work wonders 
for your business, especially for the new one, the, the new business who want to uh, tell the world that their uh, business is good and they want to sell uh, or they want to uh, get their first set of customers. And then the fourth element in the story of the 3S framework is personality. How you interact with your customers. So you think of your, create a good brand for your business. Think, uh, think as, think for your business as a as, as a human being with with values and with with personality and how it interacts with people. Now, you just pick on the, the typical personality or the traits of uh, a human being, a person, and use that in your uh, business. So pick at least two, two maximum of six. It really depends on you. Usually personality is based on who started the business. Uh, that's usually the case. Uh, that's why you can see many business names uh, taken from their their family name taken from their their sons and daughters taken from their uh, anything related to the family or 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 anything related to people and then uh, then it, 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 it has a personality with it so unintentionally people would associate or use their own personality to their business. But in order to create a good brand, uh, create a personality for your business so that this can translate to your marketing messages, your marketing symbols, your marketing campaigns, and uh, your brand in general. So pick anyone, any, on this uh, list, and then uh, just use it uh, as a as a as a guiding principle in creating messaging symbols as well as your marketing tactics. So let's go to symbols. So branding is often con confused with symbols uh, because that's the one we see, but this is just an element of branding. So first one is typography, basically the fonts you're using for your, your uh, marketing collaterals or marketing content. So that can be uh, uh, intentionally uh, tweaked so that it can uh, create a good experience and, uh, and, and enhance the emotion you want to get from your, your customers. So this is uh, a good a good uh, guide for choosing the the best fonts for you so this one serif sans serif script modern and display now you can see here uh, it shows feelings emotions as well as personality personality so that's why you need to pick a personality for your business so that you have guidance in choosing symbols for your business. And then a color palette, set of colors that you will use. So it matters in business, that in branding, that you have a consistent color palette, typography. Because uh, if they often see uh, the colors, the the the, the typography, your logo, it can uh, awaken the emotion that they felt when they had an experience, experience with your uh, business or experience with consuming your product or, or, or buying the, the service or selling them. So it's better to have a consistent color palette and starting with a set that you would use. So again, we have this list. Uh, this is just uh, an image as a guidance for you. So uh, choosing the correct color based on what you chose for the personality matters so that you have a consistent, more engaging brand. 
And then the logo. Well, a uh, logo it's a main symbol for your business to communicate its brand. So when people see uh, a logo, uh, they uh, remember the set of feelings, the relationships, the 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 positive or negative experience they had when uh, choosing or buying your product. So this oh uh, this uh, logo is a symbol that awakens the the gut feel and the experience that they had. Now, there's really no right or wrong uh, in creation of logo. Uh, this is just a symbol. So just base it on your message and your, on the story, and then and then the the personality, the typography, and then and then the the uh, color palette. Now, uh, another way to distinguish uh, good color palettes based on your personality is this uh, template that you can uh, use. So based on your personality, if you chose one or five personality traits, uh, just click or, or make a check on those who hit your uh, personality traits and that combination would be the best color palette for you for your for your brand as a symbol and then imagery as the last element for the symbols uh, consistent set of rules on what image you'll use so this matters because when you create your marketing campaigns especially when you have staff with you if you're just one uh, this is uh, a natural thing for you but if you have a business if uh, a, an individual will create marketing campaigns for you you need to have a consistent set of rules do you want to use images with people do you use stock photos do you use own photos do you uh, use pe pictures without people pictures of how you would angle your products in terms of your your uh, product images or or videos. So uh, it, it just just set a uh, specific rules so that you're guided when creating marketing campaigns in the future, so that you have a consistent uh, approach that can create a better uh, brand for you. Okay, uh, we go to the systems. This is the first two parts really are the starting point, the starting point of any good brand. However, if you had good symbols, if you had good story, if you don't have good marketing systems, you won't deliver to that promise. And uh, you will create a negative experience because you promoted something, you promoted something good, you promised a certain um, experience, but when you delivered on that uh, on that a promise, um, people would if you won't deliver to that promise, people would be uh, would have bad experience, and uh, it can result in a uh, in a in a negative perception uh, towards your brand. So. System, this is related to the one we discussed uh, the last few webinars. So we go back to the marketing board. Oh, let me just remove this. Okay. The marketing board. Uh, the Okay, it's 4S, sorry. Uh, this is a 4S marketing board. Uh, yeah, 3S. Um, we finished story and symbols. So these are elements as a starting point. And then the system is a set of uh, marketing tactics that you use so that you can capture your market, build positive relationship, and get sales in return. Now, uh, it's based on the customer journey, the awareness, consideration, conversion, and loyalty. And uh, every uh, customer journey stage needs 
one marketing tactic. And that marketing tactic is composed of objective, content, the media, and metric. So objective is what you want to achieve uh, by doing that tactic. Usually in awareness, that's, that's to be able to reach many individuals so they become aware that your business exists, that your product or service exists. What content you're using? So this is a digital marketing approach. So what content? you're using so uh we have a full list here media where would you push your 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 content uh so these are the paid media the leased media owned media and uh, the granted media and the metric is how would you measure if you're reaching the objective or not so simple as that, you would create marketing tactics using that four elements on each tactic for each um, for each customer journey stage. Okay. Consideration objective is more on increase, getting more interest, and then con conversion is the actual uh, revenues, paying customers. Loyalty is about building relationships and building repeat sales okay um the other part of the system is is how can we use um the the, the implementation or the feedback the data that we got from implementing that tactic so it matters because uh one one competitive advantage of new businesses is that they can learn quickly. When you learn quickly, you learn more about your customers. You can iterate or you can quickly change elements of your business so that the chances of success would be higher. So uh, when creating marketing tactics, it's important to evaluate everything so that you would learn from it and create better decisions for you to improve uh, in achieving your business objectives. Now, in the evaluation, you set an objective in the marketing tactic. You evaluate based on a specific metric that you identified and also the time period uh, you set in, the, in, your, in, the, in this evaluation, learning, and decision stages. It's like creating an experiment. Uh, because uh, setting tactics or picking tactics is, uh, unless you're an expert in marketing, it's like a, a hit and miss approach. Uh, you just guess the best option that you want and then see whether it would, it would work or not. So it's best to evaluate, learn from it, and decide whether to continue or not. Usually in the actual practice, People would start with social media, search engine marketing, uh, and then email marketing, maybe uh, content marketing and uh, other tactics. And then people would blindly implement as if they are getting returns on that marketing tactic. So it is important to evaluate everything to know whether it's working or not so that you can decide whether to discontinue that marketing tactic and select better ones. So it's like uh, there's a system called uh, uh, the, the bullseye marketing system, sort of like that, wherein marketing or choosing marketing tactics is like uh, putting dart pins on a uh, dart board. If you hit the bullseye, you just leave that, leave that pin there. Similar to, to this system, when you shows a good tactic and you check evaluated it and it hit the objective you just leave it as that when you hit the outermost part of the dartboard and it doesn't hit the bullseye you just pull the pin and then uh, throw it again similarly in this system when you uh, learned that a marketing tactic uh, doesn't work, you just 
You just uh, learn from it, choose a better marketing tactic, and create another experiment and evaluate it. And the list goes on and on until you find the best set of marketing tactics that would uh, achieve, that will help you achieve your marketing objective as well as your business objectives. So let me just run through this uh, system. So tactics development, uh, we have we need at least at least four tactics, but there are businesses wherein their products are really known. They they don't need to build awareness for their brand. They just need to build awareness that they exist. So, uh, but basically, it's four, four. But you can have one tactic for both. Uh, funnels or, or customer journey stages. So when you develop tactics, marketing tactics, this is a simple template that you can use. So you believe, we believe that. So we uh, is the business. So the business believes that, let's say, example, we believe that social media advertising would help me achieve uh, good sales. And then to verify that, we will use videos, for example, or any type of content and publish it on Facebook, for example. We are right if uh, metric, let's say the, the metric we use here is uh, reach. reach. Uh, we, are, we are right if we can reach 1 million uh, or, or the reach would be 1 million. Uh, at this time constraint and maybe budget constraint. So for one month at this budget can reach 1 million people. So that's one tactic you can use. So this is uh, a template that you can use for all of the final stages. So going back to the content, let me just run through uh, what content you can use. So this is an exhaustive list. I won't discuss it uh, individually. I'll just give the list to you guys. So uh, uh, just pick. And if you don't know each of uh, the content types here, uh, do your research and you would know uh, how to do them. So there are many, many and tons of tutorials out there that you can use. So for the media, um, you would choose whether pushing on your own media, your own website, own e-commerce store, anything that you own. That's basically owned media. And then you can also choose least media. So these are usually Facebook, uh, Instagram, the one, the, the social media uh, platforms that are popular for Filipinos. Uh, granted media our email, SMS, and search engine authority. How um, you, you, the authority of your domain in terms of search engine optimization, that is a granted media. So typically for search engine optimization. And then the paid media, uh, you can select the, the ones uh, applicable for digital marketing, but this list is applicable for, for uh, additional marketing as well and then uh, the objective here is to uh, get earned media so that you can uh, have better awareness and you can have a viral approach or, or, or a virality in the content you're creating so but basically you choose among the four and hope that you get an earned media Metrics, again, this is an exhaustive list that you can use, but metrics are easily, or analytics are, are easily measured in um, online platforms, especially this one, social media on platforms using uh, Google Analytics or any analytics uh, service out there, uh, the free ones. So you can check. Uh, usually for awareness, for owned media, it's the visits. 
the the unique visitors or consideration on owned media uh, bounce rate page views and uh, increase increase conversion is the actual paying customer loyalty is uh, um, repeat sales up sales and then finding the customer lifetime value and then in facebook uh, there are many awareness consideration conversion loyalty metrics that you can choose from uh, the one usually used in awareness are reach for consideration in facebook uh, click through rate for uh, messaging and then conversions uh, it's difficult to measure conversions in Facebook if you don't know uh, how to integrate or how to uh, uh, assign values on the specific clicks of your marketing campaign. So, but you can you can you can uh, select cost per lead, cost per acquisition, or or any metric based on your budget. You can also have it based on the number of paying customers. Then, yeah, we have here Twitter, Instagram, but you just uh, uh, view on this if you would be using uh, the, the specific platforms. The one typically used here in the Philippines are own platforms, Facebook. Some use Instagram. Uh, and then Google here. Um, Google uh, usually clicks number one for awareness. Google is good in finding users or traffic and uh, pull that towards your own uh, media website. Consideration, similar, uh, page views, uh, time on site, conversions, uh, the actual paying customers, or any, any metric based on the budget. And then again, loyalty is similar to Facebook. It's customer lifetime value, maybe repeat sales for those who are logged in or those who have an account on your e-commerce site. So you don't need to choose many metrics. You just choose the one for each marketing tactic. So usually for awareness, it's reach, consideration, depending on the business model that you have. But for a typical e-commerce website, uh, these are inquiries. Uh, the one who spent the most time on the website or um, the one who put uh, items on their cart. So that's a consideration. Conversion is the actual payment, the actual paying customer uh, or uh, based on your budget. And then for loyalty, it's like repeat purchases. So that's, uh, that's the basic ones that you would be mindful of. The rest are more for the advanced one. But for the, the typical starting entrepreneur in online business, just use the basic ones here. Right? So let's, uh, let's go to marketing tactics. Now, a while ago, uh, the mark the marketing system tells you how can you uh, structure your marketing tactics uh, in terms of the objective, what are the metrics, the content, as well as the uh, the media that you'll use. Now, what are the different marketing tactics you can choose from? So these are the general ones. So there are many granular marketing tactics, but for our purpose, let's go to specific, oh no, general marketing tactics. So one, the first on the list is social media advertising. So when I mentioned social media advertising, this is about paying uh, social media. So in this case, Facebook, Instagram, paying the platform so that they can show ads to their uh, users, to the, the profiles in the Facebook and Instagram ecosystem. So these are the social media advertising objectives that you can you can have in Facebook and Instagram. So on the awareness, you can see 
in their advertising platform, they are uh, classified according to the, the customer journey stages. So we have awareness. So we have the reach or brand awareness. Usually, pag reach, it's about seeing unique individuals. And brand awareness is about impression. So it doesn't matter if a customer would see uh, uh, an ad three times. So in reach, when, when a customer saw your ad three times, it's just counted as one. In impression, it's counted as three, even though uh, it's seen by one individual. So it depends on what their objectives are. On consideration, you have traffic objective, engagement on objective. This is about getting feedback, getting shares, likes, and comments. App installs are for uh, the, the app business models. Video views, if you are uh, pushing a video as your content, that's one objective. Lead generation, there would be a, a small form in Facebook when you would leave personal information like name, email, phone number. And message, there would be a button in your marketing, uh, in your advertising campaign or your content, there's a button uh, that says send message. So when customers click that send message, you can directly talk to them. So these are the consideration objectives in social media advertising. Conversions, these are for e-commerce web e website purchases wherein you would integrate your Facebook uh, ads management on your, your, your e-commerce website wherein if, if a customer would buy from your website, Facebook can see that based on the code you, you put there and uh, they can they can uh, automate their uh, ad serving depends on what your clicks are, what are your preferences. So Facebook can can automate that uh, um, auction and delivery delivery based on the, the the clicks or the 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 preferences you want. So this is more of the advanced type, uh, the one we see on the when we when you check on your Facebook news feed, you can see e-commerce website selling usually they are showing ads depending on your preferences so so that's the conversion types of ads in facebook right uh for those who are curious uh linkedin is also a type of social media but for professionals so you can set marketing campaigns a paid paid ones in social in linkedin so we have brand awareness on the awareness stage, uh, mostly for impressions only and reach. Consideration, they only offer, LinkedIn offer website visits, engagement, and video views. Uh, for conversion, lead generation, website conversion, and job applicants. So that's a unique one for LinkedIn, the job applicants. Social media advertising on Twitter. Uh, now, a few Filipinos use Twitter, but if you would use uh, Twitter as your media to serve ads, uh, we have awareness, objective, tweet engagements, followers, uh, website clicks, and app installs. Um, the second marketing tactic uh, you can use, so the first one is social media advertising. So social media advertising, you need to pay social media. So this is a this is a pay a type of a paid paid uh, digital marketing tactic. Search engine marketing is also a paid digital marketing tactic wherein you need to pay uh, Google or any search engine. In the Philippines, uh, most of uh, our search comes from Google, around more than ninety percent. Uh, comes from Google. So uh, these are the objectives uh, in Google Ads. So you can have sales uh, campaign, 
leads campaign, leads campaign, you get personal information, website traffic, uh, product and brand consideration, brand awareness and reach, apps, and local store visits and promotion. So um, Google have, have this feature of local store visits and promotion. In Facebook, you can also, also have that, but uh, it's, uh, it's a little bit advanced to, to set that, set that um, objective in a Facebook. So uh, the campaign objectives, again, uh, search. These are text ads. When you search using keywords, uh, you would notice some uh, ads would be served on top of the search engine results. That's a search type of uh, search engine marketing. Display are the, the ads that have uh, pictures in it, the one in blogs in the middle of articles. So that's display ad. Uh, shopping ads, when you, you, when you use uh, keywords that usually have a buying intent, shopping ads would appear. So uh, these are uh, ads by e-commerce websites with uh, a, a call to action button for uh, add to cart and uh, direct buy. So that's shopping uh, ads. You have video ads in YouTube. And then discovery ads are automated ads based on the preferences you'll set. And you'd let Google uh, find the best campaign type for you. So that's discovery. That's for search engine marketing. So search engine marketing is a paid one. What are the others? Uh, let me just enumerate and describe. I won't get into too much detail on this one. So third is content marketing. So content marketing is for you to create compelling content and publish it on your least media or owned media, even granted media, but not paid media. Uh, so you just create a content and publish it maybe on Facebook. So this content marketing is a, the, the typical approach of most uh, starting entrepreneurs when they think digital marketing, it involves creating uh, graphics, text, and then posting it on their Facebook pages. So that's one type of content marketing. You create content and you publish it organically. And the objective is for it to be shared, for it to be shown to as many individuals as possible. So that's content marketing. Uh, in today's time, it's very difficult to do content marketing that have uh, that 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 is uh, that have a, a good um, um, uh, performance because uh, digital platforms prioritizes paid advertising rather than the free posting. Uh, however, there's an exception if you create good, compelling content, entertaining maybe content. Uh, you can uh, make it. A little bit viral so that it can be shared in uh, in uh, other profiles and then create a viral uh, um, or or it can uh, be a viral thing sort of like that so uh, con that's content marketing you create content and you publish it and hope it become viral and by doing so if there is a lot of shares you would be known you know, people will be aware that you exist. But it's very difficult to, to create viral content because there's nearly no secret formula uh, in creating viral content. Fourth is search engine optimization. Search engine optimization is creating also content on your website, but the intention is different. The intention is for you to rank on certain keywords, let's say you have a website that sells, let's say, beauty products. So you, you, you would monitor certain keywords like beauty products, Philippines, for example, 
or beauty products, uh, color red, lipstick, something like that. That's a keyword. You would create content for that using uh, good descriptions, using good um, titles, and creating good um, codes or programming codes underneath that content so that it is search engine readable. And uh, when people link to that content, that content for that keyword would rank in relation to other e-commerce websites selling that same item. So uh, this is a very uh, technical thing. Uh, it's not just creating good content and uh, hope that it would rank. You need to link with other resources. You need to have good code or background in terms of programming at the back end of your website. So that's search engine optimization. Basically, creating content uh, that can influence your search engine result for certain keywords. So the, the objective is for you to, to appear on the first page results whenever people would type certain keywords. That's search, in, search engine optimization. Public relations is a digital marketing tactic wherein similarly, you would hope to have a content. However, the difference is third, uh, different organization or a third party would create that content for you. Usually public relations, you talk to um, new sites, for example. The one you saw earlier, the example. So they are featured in a magazine or a, a new site. Uh, they created a video and they show uh, that institution or that, um, that media or something, show that video to their audience. So it's like you pushing your story to publishers, to new sites, to uh, content creators, and hope that you got you get featured. So well, that's public relations. It's not it's not different from uh, you being being uh, featured in newspapers, in new sites. So that's basically public relations. You can also target blogs. Um, Though it's a, a, a thin line between influencer marketing and PR. Mostly PR, it's about media, uh, media sites featuring you. So that media sites are very powerful uh, source of information. When they publish something, you your brand would be elevated. So it, it, this is a good thing to, to pursue, but it's a, a very difficult one. Sometimes it's too costly for, for you to be featured. If you, if you would really pursue public relations. But if you have good story, if you have a unique product and service, you can uh, try and email um, new uh, individuals or businesses or new sites that features uh, businesses. Community building, uh, it's like, Typically, the, the common, the common uh, example in community building is building Facebook groups. Uh, that's one of the common uh, marketing tactic, digital marketing tactic nowadays. You build a community using Facebook groups, offer value there, and uh, from time to time, uh, promote your business so that you can have cost-paying customers. However, it's very difficult if you just create a community create Facebook group and you just sell, sell, sell. Usually you offer something in value so that your brand or the experience, the perception of you helping people would be, uh, you create a positive perception so that when you offer something and when you sell something, you, you, you can uh, easily connect in terms of uh, building relationships toward your customers. Existing platforms is um being in other e-commerce marketplaces so when you have an uh, an online store uh maybe in shopify or wordpress for example you have a different you you open another store in lazada shopee for example and advertise there so that's 
using other platforms as a source of uh, getting sales and promotion. And the objective is you pulling users from those marketplaces towards your own media, your own website, so that you won't pay for whatever their uh, commissions. And also, you can create uh, direct relationships in your customers. Usually, they do this when someone buys from Lazada or Shopee. Um, there, they have marketing materials on the packaging, and that packaging have a unique code, uh, a discount maybe, that when they purchase on this uh, platform, they would have a big discount. And then when that profile or that customer crossovered from, from the marketplaces to your own website, uh, you can nurture that relationship so, uh, so that they can directly buy from you. So that's accessing platforms. Educational events, creating webinars like this and uh, educating people, telling stuff. Uh, and then uh, at the end, you offer something. Usually these are for services and uh, professional related uh, things like uh, photography, digital marketing services. You offer something of value. And then for the advanced services, you get us. Something like that. That's educational events. Email marketing and SMS marketing are good follow-up tactics. These are good for loyalty, uh, loyalty on and conversion uh, marketing tactics because you have personal you have their personal information and consent. You can send email and SMS to them. Gamification are like contest used. Uh, uh, you always see this gamification in in Instagram stores wherein uh, a limited set of products would be released and people would uh, comment a certain code, comment mine, or gamification in uh, the live selling ones. So you, you offer games and uh, auction, something like that. Like that's gamification, use of games to promote something. Business development is partnering with uh, related businesses. You can create bundles so that you can uh, you can access their existing customer base. So if you're selling maybe shoes, uh, partner with a business that sells socks and then have that bundle so that you can sell on their customer base so that you can expand your uh, target market sponsorships uh that this is not the sponsorships the typical sponsorships on events something like that for digital marketing sponsorships are sponsoring certain um, websites that have high traffic so that they can see your 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 business you always see this one in Lazada and Shopee. We're in on the homepage. There are banners. So that banners uh, have uh, high marketing value. It was a lot of uh, budget to have that. But for others, if you have a specialized, specialized uh, product or niche product, you identify certain websites that have specialized traffic. Let's say for for example, you're selling gadgets. Uh, you find websites that uh, that reviews gadgets. Then you sponsor something uh, with them. Engineering is creating uh, uh, unique applications so that it can help you. Uh, uh, it can help you pull traffic in your website. Let's say, for example, uh, loan services or financial services. You have a loan calculator. So it moves an engineering coding to have that feature. So, But it can pull customers who are really interested in financial services. So uh, the common examples of engineering are the ones in Facebook wherein there are games. And then you just click, 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 and you can have... Uh, your 
your fortune uh, made up for you or the 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 look alike something like that that's just a game to get your personal information uh, most of the time so that they can send they can send another campaign to you so that's one type of digital marketing tactic but this involves a little bit of programming uh, influencer is like uh, sponsorship but you sponsor uh, personalities uh, that is related to you so you find people who review who use your product and then offer something uh, so that they would promote you and uh, mention you on their uh, in their subscribers affiliate or followers yeah affiliate is like uh, find creating a portal wherein people can get uh, products at a certain discount and they would sell the product for you so this is like an online application of uh, uh, multi-level marketing something like that uh, wherein people would get products and they would sell to their existing customer base so affiliate marketing is sort of like that but it's a little bit tricky in e-commerce it involves tracking codes and all so but uh these are about getting sales people that can sell for you but they get huge commissions lastly automation is to automate certain parts of digital marketing tactics so that it can autopilot for you let's say for example you have a uh, a mark a, a paid marketing approach in facebook wherein it generates lead ads I generate leads from lead ads and then that leads would be automatically captured by a certain automation uh, platform so an example would be zapier and other platforms we're in uh, let's say you have leads from facebook they would get that leads and put that in a uh, email marketing service and then you have set up a pre-selected or, or, or pre-written marketing templates or, or selling or cold calling or maybe uh, let's say an email an email that would sell a certain product when they responded to a certain ad so the the old thing is uh, you have an individual would pull the lead manually and uh, create that email and then send but in automation you can create an automated uh, system wherein you don't need uh, individuals who will manage for you you just rely on programs to automatically send email directly to the customers who responded to your ad so that's one there are many automation sets uh, available for us but these are more for the advanced uh, ones and the mature digital marketing up companies uh, and businesses because it involves uh, budget automation services are not cheap uh, and it requires subscription payments for those platforms uh, so uh, last we I made this research, I think, to end of 2019, before the pandemic. Ah, September 2019, before the pandemic hit. Uh, the marketing tactics that e-commerce, introduction to e-commerce, or, or entrepreneurship, entrepreneurship students in the University of the Philippines, Open University, since I started teaching there. So I, I talk to those who are operating, still operating their business. So what marketing tactic is uh, the most effective for them? So I made a ranking and I, uh, based on a, uh, a scoring system. So the, the, one, the first three that is most used is display ads, number one. Display ads are typically 
or can be used in or can be placed in social media, Facebook or Google for the display ads. The one you see on Facebook on your suites, that's a type of display ad. So display ads in search engine and uh, social media, that's the first one. And price discount. Uh, you can see here display ad and price discount is first and second. They usually use a mixture of both. So they have a display ad and they offer a discount on that ad. So that's the killer combo that, that uh, most of the students before use. Then we have public relations because uh, they would talk to re local registration, blogs, so have it featured. Uh, it can be time consuming, but the returns are high when someone picked up your your story. Direct selling. Uh, so for those who are uh, one, for for those who are not into e-commerce, uh, they would have this direct selling marketing tactic. Unconventional PR. This is a type of content marketing they, wherein they would create content that steers the emotion of customers. Usually excitement, entertainment, uh, inspiring, something unique, something with you more. They would create a content and uh, hope that it would be shared so that it can build more awareness. Um, so that's uh, the, the stick. Six, the fifth, 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 uh, most used uh, marketing tactic at conventional PR. It's a type of content marketing. Um, giveaways, advocacy, uh, and then the rest of the list. So usually they would use display ads and price discounts with a little bit of PR. Uh, when I talk to those uh, students, why use public relations it can build uh domain authority if if they would be uh they would be featured by uh, new sites uh for their search engine optimization this is a long-term thing so they would send emails and then offer their story and maybe have it featured even at the local uh, local uh, news agency or local radio stations. So that's PR. Uh, and then the rest, uh, yeah. Uh, some of the good ones, giveaways, advocacy. Advocacy is like using uh, something about, uh, 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 what's a common term? Uh, advocacy about having uh, a mission a good mission for the business and using that as a message to to uh, um, to build awareness like say uh, sustainability let's say um uh, uh climate change or something something like that and then uh finding those individuals to share that advocacy so that's one uh marketing tactic that they use uh uh, the the surprising one they are they are uh, they are integrating offline ads for those who are who are building uh, e-commerce business. So uh, they have an e-commerce business as well as they are offering offline ads on the nearby uh, customer area. And the rest, uh, the one we mentioned a while ago. Oh, the one here before there are trade shows they uh we have offline events speaking engagements so basically that's events online events that's that is that can be now coined as uh educational events or uh zoom meetings something like that and then bloggers blah, yeah. influencers okay all right last last of the marketing system is tactics evaluation when you implement so you pick four tactics marketing tactics uh you should evaluate based on the time period that you've set so 
when you mentioned that you believe, so this is the objective you initially set on the marketing tactics, you put in what are your observations. You observe that, this is your, your evaluation, and from that, you learn something. And therefore, you will decide to continue on that marketing tactic or not. So the best practice, uh, what I do is when I start, let's say, digital marketing via Facebook ads, I don't spend big budget instantly. So I test the platform first if I can reach that specific target market for that specific business. And then compare the objective, the metrics, and the success criteria that I've initially set. From there, I would know if that marketing tactic is sustainable to be used in a long-term basis for the business. You want to have uh, big returns on your ad spending. So, so that's one way to put it. You need to evaluate everything so that you can learn. And when you learn, you can improve. From there, you can uh, continuously create better marketing system. So it's a system. It's continuously improving. And a system is uh, a good way to integrate everything to create a good brand so that you can uh, realize your business objectives. Going back, uh, we have the 3S. So it's a 3S marketing board, story, symbols, and systems. And uh, just to have a quick recap, we have, we started with branding. What is branding? So basically, it's the creation of a perception from the customer experiences based on your marketing mix. So that's your place, price, products, and promotion. Now, the marketing board is a system that we will use so that we can create a good brand based on the systems, marketing systems, cost, uh, based from the customer journey, create symbols, and then create a story as story for your messaging for your brand. Uh, so I hope I'm not that uh, um, uh, fast explaining uh, the concept. We'll be uh, having, I'll be sharing the, the slides uh, after this, uh, after this uh, discussion. So before uh, we end tonight's discussion, uh, do we have questions? Do we have questions? Okay, so uh, if none, uh, that would be the end. Thank you for, uh, for staying uh, for one and a half hours. So uh, thank you very much and uh, see you on our car site. Thank you, sir. Thank you, Paul. Thank you, everyone. Good night. Good night. Bye.